here I'm going to take the opportunity just to describe the cover or the conditioning crop we're growing in this field and why uh, we're growing it here. It's sort of bringing everything together that I've been talking about in this range of videos. So we've got black grass growing in amongst this cover crop, but the black grass levels in this field are such that we've previously looked at utilising cover crops to try and help control the black grass and the black grass just takes over. So we've managed the black grass out using our shallow tillage cultivation technique, which is preserving our soil aggregation, making our soil resilient to wet weather through the winter. That's getting our black grass to grow because we're keeping our black grass in the upper 50 millimetres of soil. We're keeping our crop residue on the top, which is helping protect our soil from uh, heavy rainfall events and keep the good aggregation and feed our worms that we're preserving lower in the soil. And then we spray that black grass off in early October. And then we've spread this cover crop on using a twin disc fertiliser spreader, 55 kilos of oats, 30 kilos beans, 30 kilos of, of peas. And we've also got some charlock growing amongst uh, this area. But what you can see is that this cover crop is not fundamentally covering the soil. It's actually really quite open. And the reason for that, that is quite deliberate because at this time of year, with this now sprayed off with glyphosate, as it dies back, I want the sun and the wind to penetrate through this canopy, engage with this upper part of the soil and dry it so that we can drill our following crop into a nice seed bed. What we can also do is ensure that growers can engage with this technique and utilise their standard drill on farm. They do not need a specialist direct drill to drill in to this cover crop because we've prepared the seed bed underneath. It's nice and friable, there is a tilth there and almost any drill on farm will pass through this cover crop because it's not too thick, but the crop's done what we want it to do in the soil. Now there's lots of debates around cover crops at the moment as to their value and which ones we should choose. We've not put this in till October, so we've done, for me, the obvious thing, which is pick seed types and uh, variety types or species types that will establish well in October in the UK. So beans, nice big seed, oats nice big seed and peas nice big seed have established really well and the other crop that's really impressed me this year is linseed we haven't used it in here but in trials linseed has looked very good what's the value of this well you've seen from the soil samples that it it helps dry the soil condition the soil and present the soil in a much better condition to the drill for our crop our trials are showing us that Cover crops like this one are giving us around half to one tonne a hectare yield increase depending on the soil type uh, we're growing them on. We're getting good black grass control, so our glyphosate, we can hit that black grass and get it sprayed out, killed off early. And what we're looking for is uh, also a preservation of the nutrition that is existing in the soil that would otherwise be lost over winter because there's nothing to engage with it. So. All of these crops are either producing nitrogen or taking nitrogen out of the soil. And again, in our trials measurements, we're recording around 40 kilograms a hectare as an average figure for preservation of nitrogen within the soil uh, behind these crops. And that's not taking into account the nitrogen that's being stored within the green part of the plant. That's just an, an N-min uh, soil test to check how much N is in the soil. And we're roughly getting 40 kilograms more. So, don't be afraid to spend at least £40 a hectare on a good cover crop because you'll get that back just in the nutrition package alone and that's not taking into account the better soil conditioning and extra yield that you'll get from utilising cover crops.